Good morning, good morning and welcome to my channel. I am Deb Morris, your spirit poet. It's such a pleasure to be here with you this morning. I am excited. I am super excited. You know why? Because I see the hand of God. He is working. He is working in our midst. He's working in our lives. He's working in our situation. And if we would just ask him, say, Lord, open my eyes. Lord, I know that I'm going through stuff. I know that I'm going through the fiery trials. I know that I'm seeing, Lord God, the hand of the enemy trying Trying to reach at me he's crouching at my door you know I know that all of this is happening but I also know that in the midst of this you are working on my behalf in the midst of this you are perfecting me in the midst of this you are making in me you're working in me to will and to do your perfect will so give God the glory rejoice rejoice give God praise I am excited this morning I am excited because I know that my Redeemer lives I know that he lives and I will stand with him on that day. And the reason I will stand with him is because he right now is working in me. He right now is standing with me. He right now is leading me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. That has always been his plan. Amen. That has always been the plan of God since creation. When he said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. That has always been his plan. That we, his people, whom he has made in his likeness and his image would bear his reflection would be his replica in the earth having the same dominion he has in heaven here on earth that we would make this earth this place this planet amen an outpost of the kingdom of heaven he was creating a people that he could call his own that is why he says if my people who are called by my name amen he has never changed. His MO, his motivation has never changed. And we could sing that song. We could sing that song. We can say, you will never, ever change. <laughs> you are the Lord. You remain the same. Sing it with me. You will never, ever change. <laughs> you are the Lord. You remain the same from generation to generation, from beginning to the end. He will never change. He will never change. And he's looking for a people who will seek after him. And let me tell you something. The scriptures say, uh, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That liberty doesn't mean that you can do whatever it is you want to do. No, that liberty speaks to the fact that he's giving us access to the things of the spirit. He's giving us access to the things of God. He's giving us access to the authority that he has brought for us through the death of his son, through the sacrifice that he made on Calvary. Amen? He has not left us to live a defeated life, a life where we have to be scrounging and rummaging and trying to make do. No, he has given us authority. He says, I've given you the keys. I've given you the keys. Amen? And if you believe that in this time and season, you don't have those keys, you believe that, listen, I don't have any authority. I don't, know, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm here to encourage you this morning. I am here to say to you this morning, Morning, rise up and worship the Lord. David said it. He said, why art thou? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Rise up and worship the Lord. Job said it. He said, though ye slay me, yet will I praise him. Come on. Now is not the time for you to get defeated. Now is not the time for you to skulk in a corner. Now is the time for you to arise and shine for the Lord has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Yes, I know the time is dark, but the best time for light to shine is in the darkness hallelujah and God has called you he has called you to shine he's called me to shine and no matter what the situation looks like it is time for us to arise and shine so you're going through some situation in such situations in your life trials temptations just afflictions everything left and right on every side that is the time this is the perfect opportunity for God to work this is the perfect 
perfect opportunity for us to give him access. This is a perfect opportunity for us to open our mouths and proclaim the word of God and the fame of his praise throughout our situation, throughout our life, throughout the sphere of everything we come in contact with. Now is the time. Now is the time. This is the place. It is not time for us to be silent. It is not time for us to be silent. It's time for the people of God to arise. Come on, people, arise. I want to share some scriptures with you this morning. I want to share some scriptures with you this morning, and I pray that it will, it will, it will show you, it will open your eyes and show you what is happening in this time and season. It is not time for us to skulk in a corner. It is not time for us to accept defeat. It is time for us to arise. Amen? And let's go to 1 Peter 4, and let's start at verse 1. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. We're always talking about, let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Well, now we're understanding that this mind that he's telling us to have is a weapon. And he's telling us in 1 Peter 4, verse 1, he says, arm yourself. <laughs> I like that. I like that terminology. Arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Why are we suffering in the flesh? Why does it seem like every turn we make, there is an attack on us? Well, let me tell you why. Because the flesh is hostile to the things of God. And God is allowing these same situations that the enemy would want to pull us under. So he's allowing these situations so that we can, we can seize from the flesh. And in, by seizing from the flesh, we will seize from sin because God is looking for a holy people, a people who are separated unto him, a people who are yielded to him that has nothing in them that identifies with the evil of this world. And so when he finds that people, he works in them. He works in them to bring what? To bring a conformity to what? To the way of God to bring a conformity, a transformation, a conformation, not to the things of this world, but to the things of God. Amen. Get excited. Get excited. If you are in a rough place in your life, if the storms of life are raging, understand that it is God. It is God. It is God. God, do not listen to the voice of the enemy that says he has left you, for he will never leave you nor forsake you. Ha, he is walking right there beside you in the storm. He's saying, come my child, do not stop. Keep going, keep pressing for on the other side, on the other side, on the other side is your reward. An extremely, an extremely great reward. Amen. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. That he should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh for the loss of men for the will of but for the will of God so God is working in us he is working in us a consciousness and awareness the ability to shun sin completely to turn away from it to cease from sin I love the word he uses cease to cease from sin yeah that we should no longer live the rest of our time in the flesh. God is calling us out of the flesh. He's calling us to live in the spirit, by the spirit. See, you don't understand. But what I got to understand is that, listen, our life, this Christian life, this Christ life, this Christ life was never meant to be lived on a natural plane. See, we're called to supernatural living. We're called to supernatural living. And so what we're seeing now is a culmination. It's, 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 it's a culmination of the enemy trying to keep us away from that supernatural and God allowing us to go toward it. So do not resist. Do not fall back. That's why the scriptures say, listen, I take no pleasure in those who fall back. Don't fall back. Go forward. Go forward. All that territory that has been taken, do not allow the enemy to come in and retake it. You go forward. You be on the offensive. You go ahead in the name of the Lord of hosts, understanding that God is with you and he will not let you fall. Amen. Can you tell that I'm excited this morning? I am excited. I am excited because I know that whatever it is that's on the other side is so much greater and so much weightier than that which I'm going through. Remember Jesus? Remember Jesus? He was in the Garden of Gethsemane crying. He said, Lord, if it be your will, 
take this cup away from me. Take this cup away from me. It was hard. He didn't want to go through this particularly, but he did. He did. You know why? Because he was obedient. He was obedient to the way of God. And when God said, son, this is the way you must take. He said, you know what, God? You know what, Father? I can do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens. Well, he was Christ. But he says, I can do all things. I can do all things. And so he went to the cross. And having gone to the cross, he went to hell. And having gone to hell, he was was taken up he was taken up yeah and at the end of all of that God said to him come my Lord come take your seat come take your seat until I make your enemies your footstool amen he's saying the same to you he's saying yes you're going through it right now you're going through it he said I will not allow this cup to pass before you I will not allow this cup to pass from before you you will have to go through this because as you go through this you will be matured as you go through this you will be tried as you go through this you will be refined and as you come out of this you will be as pure gold you will be as pure gold a vessel of honor fit for the master's use can you tell that I'm excited? Can you tell? We're going to go down further in that same chapter, 1 Peter 4. Amen. And we're going to go, we're going to go down there to uh, verse 12. This is one of those scriptures, man. This is one of those scriptures. And it says, beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. <laughs> Did we talk about the fiery trials? He said, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice, he says, Hareto. rejoice, he says, to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. Mm. You are partaking of Christ's sufferings that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. There is a glory that is about to be revealed. There is a glory that is about to be revealed. So do not complain. Do not complain. Do not shut down. Do not shut down. Open your mouth and rejoice. Give praise to the Lord. Give praise to the Lord. Get into the word, clothe yourself, arm yourself with the mind of Christ. Amen. Mind, um, arm yourself with the mind of Christ so that we can get through on the other side. I want to share with you another scripture. Let's go to another scripture. It is Psalm, Psalm 105, Psalm 105. And this is talking about, uh, about Joseph. This is talking about Joseph and the whole thing that happened with Joseph. We know Joseph saw the dreams, man. He saw the dreams. He said, yes, um, the, 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 the corn, the, 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 cor the, um, the maize was bowing down to me and the sun and the stars, they were bowing down to me. And his brother said, what do you think that you are going to, and that's what the enemy is saying. The enemy is saying, what do you think you are going to take up the authority? You think you have the, you, you, you think you have the guts to take up the, 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 uh, the, the mantle that God has called you to? Huh? Do you think you can walk in those shoes? And the enemy is questioning you. The enemy is questioning, he's posing these questions to you. Life is saying, I will not allow you. Yeah? Life is saying, there is no way I am going to allow you pass this way. And the Lord is saying, stand in me. Stand in me. As a matter of fact, before we go there, let's go to Joshua. Let's go to Joshua. Before we get to Psalm 105, let's go to Joshua 1 verse 9, where the Lord says, have I not commanded you? Ha! Hey, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you will go. But right before the Lord gives him this charge, right before the Lord gives him this great encouraging charge, the Lord says, listen, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Hey, he said, don't let this depart from your mouth. But meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. So the way we are going to go forward, the way we are going to be strong and of good courage, the way we are going to be able to follow his commandments is to stay in the word, to live in the word, to eat of that word. Jeremiah, Jeremiah tells us to eat of the word. Yes, this book of law shall not depart from your mouth. Meditate in it day and night, not just one hour a day, not just one minute a day, not just for a portion of the day, but he says meditate on it day and night. 
that you may observe to do according all that is written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success regardless of what life throws at you, regardless of the vicissitudes, regardless of the happenstance, regardless of all of that, regardless of the opposition and the, the resistance from life. God is saying, if you will stay in my word, if you will read this word and meditate upon it and do what is written in it, then think not twice. Do not think twice for your way shall be prosperous and you will have good success. That's the word of the Lord to you this morning. Then he said, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go wherever you go. So I don't care if you've been betrayed by your peers, if you've been betrayed by your contemporaries, if you've been betrayed by whomever it is. I don't care what has taken place in your life. I am telling you right now that the will of God for you can still be accomplished. I don't care what the enemy has told you, what they've whispered in your ear. The will of God for you can still be accomplished because it is yes and amen. Hallelujah. And if we go over there, now we can go over there to Psalm 105. Let's go over there to Psalm 105. Let's discuss what that says. Let's look at the word of God. Come on. It is the word of God that is going to cause us to overcome. It is the over, it's the word of God that's going to cause us to overcome. Let the word of God be our testimony. Amen. Let the word of God be our testimony. So we know about Joseph sold off as a slave sold off as a slave, forgotten by his peers, forgotten by his brothers. You know, we've gotten rid of this thorn in our flesh. Now we can move on with our lives. Amen. But we know, we, we know from scripture that this is what God was doing. Ah, God used, God used the hatred of man. Yes. God used the jealousies of man. God used that to bring to pass his will in Joseph's life. Yeah. Because here it was in Psalm 105 verse 16. Yeah. Moreover, he called for a famine in the land. He destroyed all the provision of bread. People might be crying out and saying, God, how could you do this? What are we going to eat? But here it is. He said he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold a slave. They hurt his feet. They hurt his feet. Is your, are your feet hurting? Is any part of you hurting? Come on now. He says they hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons. Do you feel like you're in bondage? Do you feel like you're held captive? Like if you go left and if you go right, you can't, you can't go but a certain way. You can't go but a certain way. He says, until the time that his word came to pass. What word? The visions that God had given him. The promises that God had given him through dreams and visions. Yes, he said, until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. Ah, the word of the Lord tested him. The word of the Lord tested him. We don't know how many years. We don't know how, we don't know half the things he went through. We don't know what his mental state was like half the time. We don't know all of that, but we know that in all of that, the word of the Lord was testing him. Ah, the word of the Lord was testing him. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're being tested. You're being tried. You're being brought through to come out like pure gold, honey. Yes, that's what the Lord is doing. And let me, let's, let's read what happened after the word of the Lord tested him. Another um, translation says the word purged him. Hallelujah. And in verse 20, it says the king sent and released him. The ruler of the people let him go free. Hmm. He made him Lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. Listen to me. What you're going through is working something in you. It's working something in you. It's do it's building something. Do not resist it. Do not resist the work of the Lord in your life this day. Do not submit yourself to complaining and to worrying and doubting. You stand on the word of God. The word of God is the basis upon which we build our faith, upon which our faith is erected in the Lord. 
you stand on that word. You find scriptures that relate to your particular issue and you stand on it. You stand on it. You stand on it. And each and every day you direct your mouth into the atmosphere and you speak it out of your mouth. You declare the word of the Lord. You said, yes, I may be cast down now, but many are the afflictions of the righteous. I am righteous and the Lord will deliver me out of all of this. He will deliver me into that perfected place. He will deliver me into my, 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 my destiny. He will deliver me into that which he has prepared for me before the foundations of the earth. Because he is God. He is God. You will never ever change. Hey, you are the Lord. You remain the same. You will never ever change. You are the Lord. You remain the same. Stand in that truth. Stand in that truth and the knowledge that God will never change. What he did for Joseph, what he did back then, he can do it again and he will if you believe. God bless you. My name is Deb Morris. I'm your spirit poet. I will see you here again tomorrow. God bless you.